But as you can see, you know the behavior of fire ants. They come out and aggressively confront you. There's nothing here. Now I noticed every week since I reapplied this that they just got more and more lethargic, right? And it seems to be the pattern you Hey, it's Greg here with MaritimeGardening.com and today I'm going to talk about killing ants. Now I've gone on record many times in my videos talking about how I've got no problem with ants being in my garden and generally speaking that is the case. I've got no problem with ants being in, in the garden. Generally speaking I consider them more beneficial than pests. Uh, there's lots of things they do that are helpful in a garden. They move stuff around, they break down organic matter in various ways, they create tunnels in the soil which is good for allowing other, other insects and water to penetrate the soil. There's all kinds of things that ants can do that are beneficial in a garden and I have no problem seeing ants in my garden. Generally speaking when I see an ant in the garden I've got them everywhere here and I don't really care. But when they create a big nest right in a garden, uh, very few things can grow in that nest or even adjacent to it. It depends on the plant. Um, in this particular garden here, uh, this corner of the garden I've been noticing over the last few years, nothing, nothing grows here. Uh, if I have a, uh, if I got all kale planted here or something like that, they, you know, the, whatever is planted right here just does not grow. And my guess is that it's just the way the the, fat, the 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 ant activity affects the ability of the roots of that plant to draw the nutrients it needs out of the water. I don't know exactly what they do. Maybe that. Uh, the water drains through that soil. I don't really know what they do. What I do know is that when I plant something like a kale or a zucchini, uh, uh, you know, and the ants establish a nest uh, next to it, it, it suffers. I don't think they're eating the zucchini, but but anyway. So I've got an ant nest right here. And uh, if you go on uh, different Facebook groups, that's usually what people will do. They say, I've got an ant problem. How do I deal with ants? And you get a, a dozen suggestions on what to do. Now I've had a famous uh, mythbuster Robert Pavlis on my pad podcast numerous times to talk about different things like that, and uh, where it comes to ants, he's done an, 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 you know a fairly lengthy discussion on his blog, as I re as I recall, discussing why most of the home remedies people suggest for ants are just not uh, not going to work, and of course there's ant traps and things like that you can buy. Um, you know, that's one thing, but another solution, the, the one solution he recommends if you've got an ant nest that you, you just don't want the ant nest where it is, right? I'm happy, I got a big space here and I'm happy with ants setting up nests anywhere on the periphery of my garden and coming into my garden and getting what they need. I got no problem with them at all. But if they're setting up right in the middle of a bed like that, it's just not going to work. Um, you know, so that's, I mean, you got to square these things with your own ethics and so on and so forth. Uh, these are just a typical little black ants and really I, I, don't really relish the notion of um, wiping out an entire colony. But anyway, what I'm going to use, what Robert Pavlis suggests, is a combination of borax, just a very common household cleaning chemical, useful for other things as well, combination of borax and sugar. Uh, half borax, half sugar. So that's all I've done here. This is just, I used icing sugar because it's very fine, so I figure it would mix really well. Uh, with the borax. Uh, I just mixed up a third of a cup of borax with a third of a cup of icing sugar. Mixed it up really good. So uh, I'm going to set it up a little uh, feeding station. The idea is that they, they, they like the sugar. The borax is, is odorless and tasteless, so, but they like sugar, right? So they take the sugar, they take it down, they eat it, they also take it down into their nest, they feed it to their young, they feed it to their queen, that sort of thing, and all of them die. <laughs> That's the idea, right? So you're basically poisoning an, an entire colony uh, to death. And I mean, borax is is you know a toxic thing. You could you could kill a you know a certain amount of this. I think a teaspoon will kill a child, and maybe a tablespoon will kill an adult. I mean, it's it's very toxic stuff. It'll kill just about anything. You know. That being said, um, the things that are in bor borax, um, what is it called? Um, uh, sodium tetra. Borate, I think is the name of it, uh, the chemical, Na2B4O7. So it's just sodium, boron, and oxygen. Uh, those four things are all things that, you know, plants use sodium in small amounts. Plants also, depending on the plant, uh, use boron in certain amounts. Of course, like many things, there's a certain amount that's just toxic and that'll kill them. Same with salts. Plants need salt, but a certain amount will kill. All living things need salt to some extent, but there's an amount of salt that'll kill anything, including me. Um, so, <clears throat> what I've decided to try here 
is to just use a tablespoon of this borax sugar combination because I don't want to have an overabundance of it uh, in my soil here. Now, even that being said, uh, it's it's not it's 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 soluble in water. You know, it, it will break down. I mean, it'll break down with it'll dissolve into water and break down into other things over time as it reacts with things. Um, so, you know, it, it's not going to be here forever, right? It's going to go into the ant nest, kill the ants, and then just slowly break down over time uh, in my soil. I'm perfectly fine with whatever uh, risk that poses. And, you know, I, I think in certain amounts, it's always the, the case that chemists to say it's, it's not the poison, it's the dosage sort of thing, right? So I'm hoping that a tablespoon of this stuff is enough to kill an ant colony but not enough to, you know, wreck a section of my soil such that it won't support life. So uh, let me bring it a little bit closer here and show you how I'm setting this up. All right, so I got an ant nest right here, and just in case you don't believe me that's an ant nest, there's, there's holes everywhere. The, the soil has that fine uh, granular structure that's indicative of ants, and if I just disturb the soil a little bit, they start showing up very angry, um, not very happy with me, right? So, I mean, they're, they're around here. Um, so the idea is that I'm just going to put about a tablespoon of this here, all right, put the lid back on so it doesn't spill. I'll put something in this little, this is just a little uh, tin foil, <laughs> a little kind of like a tin foil cup I've, I've uh, fashioned here. I'm going to put a little stick here just so they can find their way into it, maybe sprinkle a little bit of this around just so that they, uh, are drawn to it. All right, and now all I'm going to do is put a little uh, house <laughs> over top of it just to keep the sun off it, keep the rain off of it, all that sort of thing. Bor borax is, you know, soluble in water, so if it rains on this, it's going to go away. And this will also just keep the wind from, you know, blowing the whole thing away because <laughs> uh, I don't want that. So there I got a little house, a uh, little dish of borax, a way for the ants to come in and out. And hopefully uh, they find it, they go back to their uh, the tribe, tell everybody about it, and uh, you know, over the course of the day, they start feeding on it heavily. Uh, I'll come back with the camera and, uh, and see if it gets to that point. I got two other nests in my garden. I get these set up as, as well. Let me show you those. All right, here I've got another ant nest. This is um, raspberry garden, and they're, the, the nest is literally right in with the raspberries. If I scuff this soil up a bit, um, I don't, know. I don't seem to be that active this time of day, but you're just going to have to believe me. This is this is an ant nest. <laughs> They're definitely here. Um, so uh, I got one of these things set up right here. Oh, there's one ant in it right now. Is he alive? Yeah, he's alive. All right, so there's one ant in it right now. He's found it. You know, it take a little while for them to to find it and uh, report back to their uh, to their leaders. <laughs> that it's there. So this is another ant nest. I don't know if it's going to be a problem for this raspberry plant having a massive ant nest within its roots. Uh, I don't know. I don't want to find out the hard way and lose the plant. So uh, I'm going to try this and see how that works. Over here I've got uh, a, um, so it's just a little tiny, teeny tiny little, uh, you know, pocket gardens, or that's what I call it, where I've got oregano growing. And uh, last year I noticed there was a, uh, there was fire ants here, at least what I think are fire ants. The, they've got a red head, a red, I think the middle part's called a thorax, and a black abdomen. The bum, basically the head part and the middle part's red, the bum part's black. Um, from everything I've read, I think they're fire ants. I, I haven't uh, been willing to have them bite me and test, <laughs> test the hypothesis the hard way. Uh, I'm just going to assume they're fire ants. They're also, their behavior is different than other ants. They seem to be very aggressive. Um, you know, they don't run away from you when you put your hand, like, uh, I got another garden in another part of the, another part of my garden where, where they were in with my potatoes last year, and uh, I noticed that they, uh, they don't really run away from you. They sort of go into attack mode when you're digging in around them. They get really uh, agitated, and they get, they start moving very quickly, and they just go into the psycho mode, um, which seems to be consistent with what I've read about their behavior. So all I've got here is just this little set up here. They're, they're not feeding on it at all right now because it's, it's early in the day. Uh, things are still very cool. It was, I think it got down to almost five Celsius last night, so it's going to be a while before they, they get active. But, uh, you know, I'll keep checking these little traps over the course of the day, bring you back, and we'll see if we actually have some real feeding activity going on. 
Good morning. So it's it's been about a week since I uh, set up these uh, ant poison traps with the borax, and I thought I'd just update you on uh, how effective it's been thus far. So, you know, I have to admit, the curiosity got the best of me about a day ago, and I, I dug this one up. So, uh, that's the only way to see if the ants are still active. So, I mean, and as you can see, uh, the bait isn't even here anymore because I, I've determined that I've eradicated the ants from the area. So, I came out here a couple days ago in the height of the afternoon when the ants tend to be the most active and dug and dug and dug and dug here. And I could not see any sign of uh, ant activity. Nothing. They were just completely gone, eradicated from this zone, which is good. I mean, this is a zucchini garden. And you can see I got one growing there. But now I've got a couple over there that, you know, I always plant two or three zucchini in a spot and thin them out. So I'll move one to right here because now I can actually put one here and expect it to grow with reasonable expectation because, you know, when you have a huge ant nest uh, in the soil, really nothing will grow anywhere near it, um, or at least anything with reasonably shallow roots will not grow. You could have a huge ant nest nest to a big tree or, you know, some kind of, some perennials, depends on the perennial, and, and they might get along fine. But uh, anyway, this is an annual garden, it always is, so uh, I just couldn't have it here. So it seems like I've, I've wiped out these ants. Let's check the other spot. Again, this spot here, my curiosity got the best of me. Uh, I was mulching here. Uh, a couple days ago, and uh, I, this is where I had the bait station under here. And uh, you can see the holes, telltale holes of an anthill, right? But you dig around there. I've seen the odd ant, there's one right there, but it's not like a team of them come out, they're not all over the place. You know, either I've poisoned all the ants here to death, or I've weakened the colony so badly that effectively it's not going to recover from what I did to it. Uh, so I just, I just decided, done, and uh, you know, it's, uh, yeah, we'll see, you know, I'll check at the end of the summer, maybe it reestablishes itself, maybe I didn't get the queen. But, uh, and I don't know, again, hopefully uh, I haven't made a mistake here, I don't know if a uh, raspberry plant and ants can get along. I just decided since these are new plants, to err on the side of caution and uh, wipe out the nest. All right, so here's a spot where we had the fire ant colony. And uh, I'll just remove the rock here, remove this. As you can see, they're still there. Now it's early in the morning, so they're not in their usual psychotic state, but you can see they're around. And look at that one, trying to go for my finger. Look how he wants to kill me. The way they focus on you when your body's around is really creepy. Look at him. He's like, look, there's another one. The way they reach for you when they sense you, your presence is really creepy. Anyway, they're definitely there. And I mean, technically they're not really hurting anything. They don't seem to be causing any problems for this oregano plant. Um, but they're fire ants and I just don't want them around. So, you know, as far as I can tell, they've been uh, working on the bait, uh, but I'm gonna give it another uh, dose um, because uh, I, think the, uh, I think the activity, it's been rained on a number of times here. Maybe the bait's lost its, you know, uh, maybe the bait's lost its mojo, I don't know. So I'll give it another, whoa, another tablespoon there. And hopefully uh, they get interested in that. I don't really know if the nest's on this side or this side. I know if you dig around here, they, c they come out of the woodwork pretty quick. Um, yeah, you can see them moving around there on that rock, right? So, I mean, they're around. But certainly on this side, this plant, you can see the activity. They're definitely around over here. Um, so anyway, I'll let them go to work on that and maybe uh, in another week. Uh, I mean, this colony still seems to be going strong. I was out here the other day and I checked it and uh, all I did was just 
I just reached my hand in here and twist, twisted around, put my hand back. And within, a, you know, less than a minute, they were all over the place going crazy. Kind of like they're doing right now, only more animated, more angry, and more, you know, scary. <laughs> so, let's put my little, uh, little roof back on here. And I'll put this mulch back where it was. Put my little roof back. And, uh, yeah, we'll see how that goes in a week. So, fire ants, very tough. All right, so it's growing up considerably here. Let's see if I can get in here. i got potatoes growing here and different weeds and stuff. But anyway, there's a little cardboard to keep everything out of the weather. There's a tin foil, right, with that had the borax on it. There's still some, move some of that stuff, there's still some borax there, okay? But as you can see, you know the behavior of fire ants. They come out and aggressively confront you. There's nothing here. Now I noticed every week since I reapplied this that they just got more and more lethargic, right? And it seems to be the pattern. You, you apply the bore, I mean, so where this rock was, <laughs> they would come out and go crazy. Now there's nothing, right? Like they are just gone. So like maybe... Uh, all my, the other ants were all gone after a week. These ones after a week, they were still around, but they'd slowed down a tiny bit. After two weeks, they were sort of like in a zombie state. They were around, but they weren't as active, as, as vigorous as they had been. Three weeks out, they were basically gone, but uh, just for whatever reason, I couldn't finish filming this video. <laughs> So now it's been about four weeks since I started the original footage of this video and the fire ants are gone. So the fire ants took longer, took a second application and a little bit more persistence, but they are gone. And, you know, I didn't even use, you can see there's some of the borax, that white stuff there, still there. So I didn't even need it all, right? So, uh, yeah, this totally works. Check out right here where this zucchini is growing. This was an ant nest. And for the last two years, maybe three, I could not grow anything within a, oh, 16 inch radius of this spot because it was an ant nest. I don't know what ants do to soil, but nothing grows. Well, not, not, nothing's a strong word. A lot of things will not grow if they're, especially these sort of like shallow rooted annuals, right, like a zucchini or whatever. They just can't seem to get what they need when they're, you know, I mean, the ants aren't attacking the plant, but they change the way the soil functions and the plant just can't seem to get what it needs from the soil. It's like the soil near an ant hill just doesn't hold water properly or whatever. Uh, but now look at this thing. I mean, so it's been, I don't know, probably three weeks, maybe a little bit more since the ants were eradicated from this spot. And I moved this plant from, from a spot over there. I just had more than one, more plants than the space could sort of handle over there. So I just plucked one out and moved it here. You know, it's not, not as big or as developed as its neighbor, which has never been moved. It was set back. But this plant is healthy and growing. It's just maybe a week, a week or two behind its, its neighbor, right? It's about half the size of its neighbors. But if there was an active anthill, this would not be functioning at all. So, yeah, it worked. Hey folks, this is normally the part of the video where I summarize everything, but uh, my stupid microphone wasn't on, so I'm going to do a voiceover while uh, you can watch me talk there. So I'll make it really short. Uh, yeah, if you've got an ant problem that, uh, you know, is just not going to solve itself and the ants are just doing something in your soil that's just going to make it uh, impossible to grow things in that spot, or you've got a, a problem ant, like a fire ant, that's dangerous, it can bite, you know, I've got young kids, my wife, everybody you knows in the garden, I don't want anyone getting hurt. Uh, so if you really do have an ant problem, I mean, as I said before, I generally speaking consider ants beneficial in many ways, but if you do have an ant problem, they got to go. Um, you know, there's lots of different suggestions out there online for how to deal with it. I would just go with the borax because it works. Ta you know, half borax, half sugar, put about a tablespoon of that out. Uh, monitor it over the course of a week. Uh, try to keep the rain off it, that sort of thing. 
Uh, if the ants are still active after a week, uh, re replace that and just keep doing that. For uh, the, I had two, three different kinds of ants that I did this on. I had sort of like a tiny black ant, a sort of medium-sized black ant, and then those fire ants. Uh, the, the two black ants, I don't know what kind they are, there's all kinds of different varieties of ants. The two black ants were, were basically wiped out in about a week. And the fire ants, I would say, took about three weeks. Um, and as you can see there, uh, where the one ant colony is uh, was uh, the spot I couldn't grow anything for the last couple of years. Now I got a nice zucchini growing there. So uh, it totally works. So yeah, you got an ant problem, get some borax, one box of that. <laughs> if you're only using it for ants, it'll probably last you the rest of your life. And uh, you might even be handing it down through the generations because <laughs> it's very rare. I have an ant problem I think needs a solution. Uh, this year was just, you know, those two spots were have been a problem for a number of years and I thought why not deal with it. Since I have the fire ants anyway, which are a new addition to my garden, the last couple of years I've been noticing them. Uh, so, uh, still, that <laughs> the treatment I used in the garden didn't even make a dent in that box of borax. So, uh, anyway, I hope you found that interesting. If you did, please like, share, subscribe. Check out my podcast, MaritimeGardening.com. And until next time, get out there, get at it, have fun in your garden. Thanks for watching.